Hey y'all. You know if you watch my personal channel, you've seen me work with a lot of those 18-inch AFS cases and you know you can produce really nice custom things that have all sorts of buttons and switches and all that sort of thing. But while they're great to play on at home, uh, the thought of going on the road with them is just painful. Well, SGF devices must have heard my plea because they first sent over their Bridget, the GP2040 based flat box controller. And they said, you know, that's not enough flat box goodness, so we're going to send you over our Zappa unit, which is based on the Brook Fusion. So we're going to put these guys through their paces and tell you, hey, are these great controllers for on the road, or should you look for something else? Let's go into first impressions, and first, let's talk about the Bridget. Now, I've already mentioned, and let's get this out of the way, these are 3D printed flat boxes, and you know, some of you, you're thinking, oh, it's 3D printed, oh, it'll be bad, oh, I don't like it, I want wood, I want metal, I want acrylic, and before you click off the video because you're enraged that we dared to color something different, uh, give this a try, because there's a lot about this I love. Now, yes, it is 3D printed, but just, you know, as a stress test, and I usually do this with everybody, I'm, press I'm giving it some good pressure here, but I'm not getting any warping, deformation, anything like that. This is a solidly built little box. Uh, I'm really enjoying it. And something I'm really liking about it that, for those of you who are in acrylic, you, you know the pain. Uh, first of all, it has just this subtle texturing that feels really great to touch. And when I, if I go to hold it, I, I can do this and I, I feel like I have a decent grip. Whereas with acrylic, it might have some slippage. Uh, I just have to squeeze it that much harder. But with this, it just feels like I don't have to. It just feels easy to carry, partially because it's lightweight, but also because, you know, it's got this lovely texture. And something else about this texture, you notice I'm not leaving behind any fingerprints at all. Yeah, that alone for you people that are just tired of having to bring along a towel to hide your shame, because uh, you have to clean it every time you play a set, you know, here you go. It, this texture just prevents all of that. Now, will you have to clean it in time? Of course. Will it be as frequently? No. So if you are just tired of having to clean your stick every single time because it's acrylic or just something that picks up fingerprints, uh, look at this, because nothing. <laughs> there you go. So another advantage that 3D printing has is that there's all sorts of different colors. And just take a look at their website right here as I'm showing it now. You can see that there's all sorts of options for you, and it's really easy to select what you want. Now, in my case, I went with a gray CF, carbon fiber. If there's actual carbon fiber mixed into this filament, I don't know. I know there are such things out there, but I have no idea how much of that it actually is there. But I do like the color, so that's really what's most important to me. Now, I went with a red marble for my directional buttons and a white marble for my action buttons. I just like that color scheme, so there we go. Uh, and speaking of buttons, let's go ahead and ply one off. There we go. And yeah, so keyboard switch under there. These are linears. Uh, they're chalk V2s. I know previous versions of this use the chalk V1, so the little button caps are a little bit different. Uh, whether or not you, you probably can order additional replacement sets. So let's say I decide to change the colors on these at some point. Uh, you probably do that. At, and I think there's some third party sellers that do it as well, but just make sure you're getting the Chalk V2 version because if you get the V1, they're not going to fit. That top cap is totally different, or the stem, sorry. Anyhow, one thing that is nice advantage here with the button layout is, you know, the hitbox left side here is just fine, but these action buttons are laid out a little bit differently than stock hitbox. Stock hitbox will use a noir layout, so you know, this follows more of a curve. These bleed down, these bleed down just a tiny bit. But here you have a Vulex layout. Now, if you're coming from a fight stick already, it probably has a Vulex layout. This kind of, well, these first two buttons are 
down here, well, all these are straight in a row, but they're, you know, a little bit offset. So that's one less thing you have to adjust to if you're going to an all button controller for the first time. So that can be a definite plus. At first I was kind of like, uh, do we want the traditional? Do we want Vulix? I think either way can work. Speaking of other buttons, the option buttons. So when I, I look at this and these do have some pressure that they need to activate, which is a good thing. Uh, I don't feel like you can just accidentally mash onto them and activate them, which is a very nice touch. So you actually kind of have to make deliberate effort to press it. So even if you're mashing these pretty hard, most of the time you're going to be mashing like this, I guess. Uh, you're not going to accidentally activate you know, your options here. Now I do wish these were labeled. It'd be nice if we could print the, you know, this is L3, this is R3, this is start, whatever. Uh, into these, but I know GP2040 kind of uses A1, S1, whatever. Even if we we're using that notation, it'd be nice just to have something to indicate that. Yeah, six buttons, you'll eventually memorize it, and that's fine. However, it'd just be nice. Up top, USB-C connector. Of course, you know, want to keep this as slim as possible, so use the slimmest USB connector available. Uh, on the back, more of that grippy texture. Their logo is printed within, so it's not going anywhere. You're not going to scratch that off. Uh, it is using these little rubber feet, so, and these are just glued on. Um, I feel like if we made, and that's kind of being hard with the screw holes where they are, if you could just make flat uh, indentations here to hold these in, um, maybe that would be a little bit better. They're just kind of glued in on top. Um, let's see if it's bad harder room. Yeah, they can come off if you do enough force, but uh, yeah, these guys can be pressed right back on, I think, or I can just super glue it back on. So it's not a huge problem, but um, that's kind of the same. It, the issue here is, yeah, I love this texture to death, but I don't think sticky things work as well on it. So stickers and such to customize it probably not going to be as optimal as they would be on a flatter surface. All right, I think we've toured the first impressions of the Bridget well enough, so let's move on to the Zappa. All right, here we are. I went with Red CF because I, I love that texture. It's actually less pronounced here than it is on the Bridget. Uh, it's still present, but it's a much more subtle feel here. And but curiously on the back, it's much more intense. You can kind of see the shimmer here. Uh, just something to note. Uh, I don't know if that's the same for every production unit, but uh, yeah, uh, I wish it was a little bit grittier on top. Uh, anyhow, I went with the red CF and black buttons, silver uh, option buttons here. They were nice enough to provide that. And I just wanna, let's do some touring. We have a lot of the same advantages, disadvantages I've already talked about here, though these are different keycaps. So they are MX style, but I think these are ones I've seen over on like AliExpress. They're kind of common. They're used in the punk workshop buttons. Uh, let's go ahead and pry one off. Yep, same chalk V2 switches, just different keycaps. These are injection molded instead of 3D printed and you don't have as much color options, but we are laid out in the same way. But these just, they look a little bit smaller. I don't know. Like if I compare it here, just even just the 30 mil, this looks bigger to me. I don't know. Anyhow, uh, unlike the Bridget, these are you know, circle buttons. Um, and it looks like there is a little indentation for player status up here. Uh, so we'll see if that works with PC or not. Uh, another USB-C connection and pretty similar layout on the back, you know, in green logo. And of course, just noting the brook so you can flex on your friends, say you got a Zappa and kind of same little rubber feet glued on. I don't want to push one off again. <laughs> uh, anyway, let's just do a quick comparison in size since this guy is a little bit bigger. I don't think it's what it's not wider and we'll see this in dimensions but you can see that yeah it does have a little tiny bit more room there but that's okay i don't think that's going to be a deal breaker for most anyone uh, 
Otherwise, a lot of the same advantages that the Bridget had, but now you just have the advantage of Brook Fusion, so you can play it on about any modern system, which is great. And yeah. Button feel, it feels, just with the different caps, it feels just slightly different, but um, it's not in a bad way or anything like that. So I'm excited to get these play tested. Let's go ahead and take a look at the internals of the Bridget first. All right, I wanna start with getting a little bit more in depth with popping one of these switches and showing you what's under here. It's just a kale red. You can use a blue or a brown. And yeah, these are hot swappable, so you can pop that out. Just remember how you put it in, and it's really not a problem. Oop, let me not flip it. There we go. All right. So there's the basics. I mean, they're they're all like that. Anyhow, let's flip it over. And I've already removed most of the screws, but to Remove these screws, you're going to need a precision screwdriver, pH zero. And usually I do recommend putting a towel or a pillow or something soft down, but I don't think there's anything I'm really going to scratch up here. So underneath is something kind of expected. You have the flat box board. Uh, yep, I can pull that out. So we can see our RP2040 chip is here option switches, USB-C port, and there you go. So got that little hair again under there. So sometimes you may need to clean this out. And if you have that little side support piece come out, don't panic. Just slide it in like so. And then make sure like the grippy kind of textured side is on the inside. Should slide in, there you go. Just put it back in like so. Got a little wiggle, make sure you're not on that. If I pick it up, yeah, it should slot in. But the only reason it's not is because the buttons are kind of making contact. So all I'll do to put it back together sandwich these back in and because I didn't lose this screw I can just do the thing oh, come on and there we go now I just replace all the other screws and that's it so let's take a look at the Zappa up next we have the Zappa and taking a look let's go ahead and pull off one of these caps I believe these are the same caps that maybe the OC Punk Workshop buttons use. And that same kind of swirl boilerplate sort of thing. Okay, yeah, and we're still using red switches here. They're a fan of the KLH. Kale? I don't know. So I can just kind of ply one out. And we have a very similar design down here. They're all hot swappable. So again, if you want clicky switches, you get the blues. If you want tactile switches, you want the browns. But other MX switches or even low profile ones are not going to be compatible. So don't even think of using anything else. All right. To put it back, just make sure your, you know, the cross is aligned with the plus underneath and you should be good to go. All right, let's go ahead and open her up. I've removed all the screws again, except for this last one, because it's boring to watch me undo a lot of hand work here. Anyway, once you undo all that, just pull off the lid, and we have a very similar design. Same kind of support, same, almost the same box there, but of course we're gonna have a different ship. Now, I cannot ply this off easily, so I believe I'd have to probably take off all the caps. You can kind of get an idea of what's underneath here. Oh, there we go. Now it wants to cooperate. And this time I was smart, laid down my towel. <laughs> so here you can see that these are just kind of 3D printed and they you know, push down onto the switches here. And then our Brook Fusion is directly mounted on there. So there's no need for any 
screw terminals or anything like that. It's just bonded straight into the underlying board. So right away, you know, it's pretty much the same deal, just a little bit more on the vertical since we're taking up more real estate with that. That's a pretty snug fit, which is nice. Um, USB-C port, and on the back, you have much the same. So you can see that we have the hot uh, swap sockets installed already. Otherwise, we're not too exciting. Once again, you know, just make, if you are taking this apart to clean it out or what have you, just make sure you, you, know, you put the corner braces back in here. Make sure everything's pressed down and then place your bottom plate on. And when you are screwing this back together, and I do recommend as always that you put your screws in a cup, container, what have you, a tackle box can, you know, one of those kind of sort of containers can work great. And start with the center. And then pick one corner, same for here. Make sure we are all lined up on that side. And then work kind of in an X shape. So since I did that corner, I'm gonna come down here. There we go. And then you would just go here, here, and then either one of these. Just finish them all off and you are reassembled. Let's get you guys some measurements on these. So on the Bridget, we're starting off at about eight and a half across. And then um, just a little bit over five inches uh, that way. And of course, as far as height, we're no, uh, maybe about ooh, just, just shy of about half an inch. So yeah, again, this is very small. Let's take a look at the dimensions of the Zappa. Once again, eight and a half inches across. And we are a little bit taller at about five and a half inches. And then for height, yep, again, about half an inch. Let's talk about weight. The Bridget weighs a very svelte nine ounces. So you can actually put this in first class mail. The Zappa comes in at a little bit heavier, just by an ounce, 10.4 ounces. One really cool thing about these guys is that these are small enough to fit inside a tablet sleeve. So I had a few spares and I can even squeeze in my cable to go with it. Voila. Just to show you the dimensions when you're using a Steam Deck, uh, right now I'm measuring about 10 inches this way and about a eh, foot across. Now that's not because of the Bridget or the Zappa really. It's, you know, the width of the Steam Deck is really your determining factor here it's because this is thinner than that. And just to show the same thing here, there you go. Now, you could probably reduce this if you have a very limited amount of space and you need to maximize it if you have a right angle USB connector. So in this setup, I have a straight on. If you have a right angle, you could probably get it closer without mashing the cable like I'm doing here. So there is that. Before we get too much into the lab stuff, I want to talk about how to update these two. And we'll start with the Zappa because you know, most of you might be familiar with the Brook update process, but just to be sure, if you're totally new to this, what you want to do is just search for Brook Fusion firmware in your favorite search engine and make sure the link you use has brookaccessory.com. Don't choose anything else that's weird. All right, we'll go here, and this took us to the PS4 section. Of course, if you just go to brookaccessory.com directly, that's fine too, you can then go to support and find it that way. We're gonna scroll all the way down and look for UFB Fusion. From there, if you have PC, you'll use this green link and blue for Mac download. I'm gonna use our green link and download the firmware. Just save it to your favorite spot 
And once it's downloaded, you'll see that you have a Universal Fighting Board Fusion Online zip file, and I'm making this extra large for demonstration purposes, but you might be in details mode. You know, just work with what you have. Uh, I like to use 7-zip, so you can just 7-zip, extract files, or extract to you know, here, even works better. So that creates a new folder, and then just double click, go further in, and then you can run this. Uh, preferably, I run as administrator, but you know, there you go. Windows asks you, hey, do you want to allow this to make changes? Just say yes. And then you'll have a screen that says, okay, push these buttons and connect your controller, and then we can start the firmware update. Okay, the next step is pretty easy. Make sure you don't have your Zappa plugged in before you run this, but if you do, you can just unplug it, you'll be fine. Just take your USB-C cable, and I have a right angle adapter. You don't need it for this process, but it just makes life a little easier and cleaner sometimes. And before you plug it in, hold these two buttons here. Next, make sure you insert it fully. You should hear that, and there we go, ready to update. Now, tournament firmware disables things like turbo and sets SOCD mode. I'm just going to use standard and then hit start. So the first time you do this, it will try and update to the latest firmware. And then that's it. Hit confirm. I would unplug and then you can reconnect and keep it in normal mode. And at that point, you can close this, you know, your windows, and we don't need this anymore as well. So that's how to update your Zappa. Let's show you how to update the firmware on the Bridget. It's slightly more complicated, but not too difficult once you get the hang of it. Now the Bridget runs the GP2040 CE firmware, so you're not gonna be going to Brook, and to get to access this, we want to get into the web config. And if you don't know what the address is, you can come down here to get documentation and make sure you go to gp2040-ce.info, not the original GP2040, as the old one is not really updated. Anyhow, here is the address. And it's a nice link, so you can just right click and do it in a new tab. Uh, for example, it's not going to load because we're not connected. Now actually boot the Bridget into web config mode. You want to hold the leftmost option button and then plug in our USB cable. Now I have this right angle adapter. That's fine, you don't need it. I'm just doing it because it's there. Once you got it plugged in, you can let go of that option button, come to the tab you loaded and just refresh it. Now currently I'm already at 7.4, but let's just go through the steps on how to do this. Now that we're in the web config, let's go ahead and look at, okay, what do I want to do before I update? What do I need, etc. Now, usually if there is a new version, there'll be a link here and you can jump to the page that has all the firmwares for GP2040. However, before we do that, let's go ahead and do a data backup, just in case, especially if you've made any changes to the default settings, you just want to save it, it'll be nice. So. Make sure all these are checked. We don't really have LED on here, but that's okay. Just hit save and then save it to whichever folder you like. That'll be a backup file later. You can come and restore it if you need to. All right, so let's go back home and then talk about, hey, where do, what firmware do I want? What do I download, etc. Now we thought we have a backup. If there's a new version of the firmware, you'll see a button here that'll say update now, whatever, and it will link you over to the OpenStack Community GP2040 CE page. Uh, for example, this is the latest as of the recording, and let's just scroll on down. So in the case of the Bridget, we have a dedicated SGF devices one, so we can go ahead and use that. Just click it, it will download. I already have it downloaded, so we'll skip that step. And next, we'll show you how to update that firmware. Okay, back over on your web config page, go ahead and click reboot in the top right corner here, and then tell it to reboot into USB boot cell mode. And you can leave the tab alone and you will see that Windows or your Mac will show a new drive, RPI RP2. For me, that's the E drive. And I wanna go ahead and check out my files and downloads. And I know this is extra large, that's okay, that's on purpose so you can all can see it. Anyhow, we 
have this SGF devices file, the UF2. All we need to do to update the firmware is copy this over to that E drive. So you can right click and drag or just click and drag, doesn't matter, copy here. Once it finishes, your fridge should reboot itself. And you'll see that E drive go away. I would wait a couple minutes just to make sure it goes through the cycle. And you may want to unplug and replug. Uh, and when you do so, just hold that left button again to get the win config. All right, I've let it this settle for a couple minutes now. Let's go ahead and continue the update process. So what I want to do is go ahead and disconnect the USB and then hold our leftmost option button and reconnect. That'll put us back into web config mode. And just come over to your web browser with the 192.168.7.1 address and refresh. And there we go. You should be at the current firmware. We already were, but you know, this is just for demonstration purposes. What you want to do now is just make sure your settings are there. If not, you have configuration, restoration, hit load, and then go to your downloads folder and stick in that backup. I'm not gonna do that now, just don't wanna overwrite it, but feel free to go through and look at these settings. Be very careful though, because you can change things here that will make it unable to boot or just screw up all your pins and that's no fun. So be mindful of that. Probably the most relevant thing you want to check is your SOCD cleaning mode. Now you can set this with a key combination, of course, but in you know while you're here, you might as well check to make sure, hey, uh, if I need to be CPT compliant, I'm gonna be set up to neutral, but I am lazy and I just like last win on everything. Once you're done here, you can just hit reboot and controller mode. And now you're ready to play. Let's go ahead and do our basic acceptance testing. So starting with directional pads. Yep, those are working. All right, do some button checks. Those are looking good. Some key combinations. That's looking good. Oops, called up my Xbox <laughs> menu there. All right, looking good. All right. So I think we're passing everything here. Um, yeah, I could do some key combinations to change the left stick, right stick, but I'm lazy and not gonna do that right now. Let's go take a look at the Zappa. All right, let's do our basic acceptance testing for the Zappa. So left, right, down, up. Let's roll them around. You can almost get a decent circle. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's do individual buttons. Three, oh, three four, one, two, three. <laughs> okay, good. Let's do some button chords. All right, all good here. And let's just test out also CD. So yeah, that's gonna be neutral. And that is up wins. Okay, if I try it the other way, yeah. So we're all good there. Okay, that's our guide button, so. Got a screenshot button, and there we go. Okay, so I think we're all good as far as basically accepting our Zappa here. Uh, I didn't expect any less. So let's get into some games. All right, just before we go into the game, I do want to get a little bit of pressure and slide testing done. So pressure-wise, I can press all around, and there's barely anything. I'm giving a good push too, so that's pretty good. All right, let's see. We do have a little bit of slidey, but again, it's an all button, so you're directing all that force downward. I'm not too worried. It's more those sudden hits, and this seems to be doing the job of keeping it in place. 
Uh, maybe later you upgrade to some bigger pads or something like that if you really need to, but I mean, this is on foam. So let's go ahead and try it out. And yet, um, not a huge improvement, but uh, again, I just smack it. It's not moving too much. Huh? You know, if your cat, like mine, uh, might smack things around, then it should be fine. It's not going to go flying. All right, let's repeat the same test with the Bridget. So, pressure test. Yeah, I'm getting about the same reaction here. So that's good. Uh, slide test. It's the same feet, so I exp yeah, it's about the same. You know, tap test here. Okay, let's try it without the foam. And, yep, pretty much the same. Yeah, but it, it, there is an increased resistance here, but uh, it is about the same. So, pretty well performing. Uh, we could use bigger pads or something like that, but you might reduce the portability. Otherwise, you know, pretty happy with it. All right, figured I'd just play a couple of rounds against the CPU and you know, we'll have some fun with it. Now, I'm all my testing uh, on the tabletop, it works great. And lap, it feels okay, but because I, you know, I'm a big boy, I, it just feels like I have to squeeze my legs together, so you're the same, it might also be an issue with you. It feels buttery smooth. I mean, it is a Brook Fusion, so you, know, you can't really go wrong. Not, I already did the slide test, and just during play, you're seeing it's, it's not moving at all, so it's not something I'm worried about with an all button. So, this is a lever base setup. Yeah, I'd be more concerned. Alright, let's do some. Let's play some gameplay with the Bridget. And as expected, GP2040C performs great. Both this and the Zappa, I mean, if I'm making mistakes, it's my fault. Which can be simultaneously satisfying knowing that it's all me. When, when I scrub, up, it's all me. Now, I know GP2040, they'll say it's faster than Brook, etc., but in real world gameplay, how much do you notice? It's really hard for me, I can't tell. If you gave me two flat boxes, is that, can you identify which is which? I, I could, probably could not do it without you know, other trickery. Just on the speed alone, there's no way. So. Again, during actual gameplay, there's not really any sliding. It plays decently in the lap. Once again, because it's small, I have to concentrate on keeping my legs together a bit. But, um, it's not a big thing to complain about. I've played a number of games on it now, and I can play for a pretty long time before I you know, get irritated with it. Hold it. Thank you. Alright. Now when we're back from the lab, let's talk about what I liked and what I think we can improve upon for these controllers. I'm going to start with the Bridget, but... You know, a lot of the stuff that I uh, note about the Bridget will apply to the Zappa. And where there's differences, of course, I'll make note of that. So first, let's start with the Bridget. Now, for 100 bucks, you are getting, I think, an amazing value. You've got an excellent case and closure and something subcompact you can throw into a little laptop sleeve, throw your cable in, and you're ready to go wh you know, wherever you want to play games. Now, of course, you might need adapters and such, but, you know, that comes later. 
it's just so easy to take this thing around to your friends, your local game center, wherever you're going to go and want to play. And it's so lightweight, you're not going to notice it in your bag dragging you down like some of my other belts, <laughs> right? So uh, that is already a great deal. And if you're looking to get into all button controllers, hitboxes, then 100 bucks is an amazing value. Especially considering that so many others cost a lot more, you know, maybe not too much more, but they're not available. So it's kind of like, okay, who has these things that are low cost enough and are actually available so you can buy them and receive them within, you know, not six months or worse. Uh, if SGF can pull off consistent deliveries, then you've got a winner on your hands because it seems like everybody else, it just takes so much time for them to come to market or to come, you know, be available. And if you're not in line to snag one, well, tough luck. All right, now that's enough of me gushing again about the case and the compact form factor. I also like that we're using USB-C. I know that seems kind of trivial, but having a reversible connection so you're not fiddling with it is nice and plus USB-C is rated a lot higher insertion count than other USB types and of course I know we're using it because it allows us to have this really slim form factor. Now specifically to the Bridget it is using the GP2040 CE firmware and yeah it might be considered for advanced users but you do get a lot of power under the hood there. Case in point, let's say you have a game you're playing on PC and it does not let you remap inputs. And the way it defaults is just painful to use. Well, just go back into the web interface, reassign the buttons the way you like, then that game doesn't matter, right? And you can save it as a profile, toggle to it when you're playing it, and then change back to your normal profile when you're done. It's all possible with GP2040. Yeah, I know with a work wingman, you can do some remapping, but it's not as intuitive. And sure, you do have to be careful that you don't, you know, remap yourself out of the interface and have to do some really painful resets. But hey, at least the option is here. Something that I'm a stickler for is documentation. And SGF has been kind enough to provide not only online documentation, but also printed documentation and another feature, which is kind of nice. Uh, first of all, you have these printed reference sheets that you can stick to the bottom if you like. Uh, so that way on the Bridget, you know how to change SOCD modes. There's not as much to do on the Zappa, but at least it has a QR code for, you know, you can just click, you can scan it with your phone and there you go. Also, they do provide printed manuals with each device, which I really appreciate. Sometimes I don't always want to just look online and boom, there we go. Now, I'm not going to be a nerd enough to bring this with me everywhere, but you know, at least I have it available. Um, and if you know you have no use for it, you just feel like, oh, I'm going to get the online version, just whatever, you can always recycle it, I guess. All right, so what about the Zappa? You know, why would I consider paying an extra hundred some dollars over the Bridget when the Bridget does so many things really well? Obviously, the first and foremost thing really you're, that's going to be on your mind is you know, I want the ultimate in multi-system compatibility, and that comes with the Brook Fusion. You want to play right out of the box with PS5, PS4, Xbox, etc., etc., and so on and so on. And there are so many systems that this thing supports. It, it's just crazy. So, you know, if you want out of the box compatibility with all of these systems, the Zappa is probably going to be the more economical choice over getting, say, a Bridget plus the FGC adapter plus the XB2 plus this plus that, right? And, you know, it's also less hardware to manage instead of, okay, I got to make sure I have my Bridget and I need my adapter and my USB-C cable and the sleeve, I just forget it. I bring this, I bring my USB-C cable, and you know, if I wanna throw it in my tablet sleeve, there, there we go. So it's really kind of a convenience factor, and you know, do you like Brook firmware? Do you like GP2040? That choice is kind of up to you. All right, we've talked about what I liked. I've gushed enough. What's wrong with them? What can we 
do better next time or you know, what's actually unavoidable in the way we're doing things right now? Well, the first thing is customization. Yes, you can get the body color of your choice and they have, there are many different colors that are all lovely, uh, but you can't obviously put your own artwork on these. Uh, stickers probably not going to hold up well on these because they're not really smooth. Uh, they might stand up for a while. I don't. I haven't really tested, but with the kind of matte, you know, textured surface, uh, I wouldn't trust it. Now for the Bridget, you can get the case in number of colors. You can get the buttons in all the same number of colors and you know, get them how you like. Uh, the Zappa, though, you are getting kind of a limited selection of these. I guess. I want to call them boilerplate, but that's not right. These kind of uh, stovetop buttons because <laughs> they have the little sp swirls in them like the stovetop things. Uh, anyhow, you can get what I have is black, uh, there's a clear, there's blue, and there's red. So maybe there's more options coming or uh, maybe hopefully in the future we can get you know, some of these options over here if we want. You know, just saying. Uh, but, you know, it does limit you a little bit. I don't know if we get, you know, printed in a design of your choice. Uh, that might be possible, might be a little extra, might be something that in the future when you're ordering, you can put in a vector graphic and do something to indicate this is what I want built in. But otherwise, yeah, you're not going to be putting in your own artwork layer or anything like that. It's pretty much, okay, what colors do I like? And there you go. Now, could these take painting? Um, probably, maybe spray paint would work. Uh, of course, you know, don't get it inside there, but uh, maybe there's some creative things you can do there. I'm sure there's all sorts of options, but the traditional, okay, I'm going to print out artwork and then get it inserted is not really an option here. All right, what else do I have to gripe about? Well, number two is, I've said it before, I really would like these option buttons labeled somehow. Just little tiny icons built into the printing. And I know we can do it because, you know, something like this, I uh, just like something to indicate, hey, this is star, this is lect, you know, whatever, L3, R3, and so on. So just for my reference, because I'm old, I forget things. Uh, now I know with the GP2040, that might take a different form. Uh, I say just you know what the x input equivalents are and go with that um, that way it's just a little thing and of course make it optional so that if someone likes the stealth approach like this hey great uh, but if you're like me i like having it built in and maybe i should have requested it i don't know up next is i think these play really well on table and they can play in the lap, um, but because they are small, because I have, I'm big, <laughs> let's just cut to the chase, uh, it does feel a bit small and I have to keep my legs pretty squeezed together if I want to lap play these, but it's not to say they're totally uncomfortable. I've played many hours already of, say, Street Fighter Six World Tour or something like that, where I'm just plopping this in my lap and... You know, I get along with it just fine, but I do have to keep my them pretty tight together just to make sure it doesn't flop somewhere and uh, become a mess. But otherwise, yeah, that's just going to be inherent to the form factor here. Maybe in the future there'll be something like the what is it, the footsie board that the Snackbox Micro has. So when you do want to play at home, you can just you know stick that in and get there. You're ready to go. But Right now, lap play on its own is just okay. Another thing that's inherent to these is that, yeah, you don't have any room for expansion. So if you wanted turbo, if you wanted a DP LS RS stick switch select, uh, that's really hard to do. Um, imagine maybe you could have some sort of switch built in to the side that's very small and that would handle that. But, you know, there are key combinations that'll let you switch between them. It's just a matter of, hey, you gotta memorize them now. So there is that obvious thing to point out. I know it's kind of unfair to expect that, but, you know, there it is. It is something you want to consider when you're going to be paying your money for an all-button controller. Okay, finally, I pointed this out earlier in first impressions, but these rubber feet, 
Um, yeah, they are kind of susceptible to coming right off. So you might want to get yourself some extras or look at super gluing them. I feel like if we added a little smooth spot for them, a little bit recessed in here, if that's possible, and then glued it, it might have more of a chance to stay in place, but gluing them to this uh, textured stuff, it, it makes it easier to come off. Um, yeah, you can super glue them right back on. You can get some others and put them on. Uh, I Normally during play, this is not sliding around a lot, so that's not a concern. But let's say you go to put in here, and you're a little bit rough with it, and it just rubs up against the wrong way. And there you go, you've lost a foot or it's come off in there again and it's just annoying, but very minor point. Let's finish out with my usual two questions. Who is this for and who is this not for? Let's start with the Bridget. And I think the value proposition here is pretty obvious. $100 gets you into the world of all button controllers with something that's subcompact, so easy to travel with. It's very high quality 3D print. I love that texture, will not pick up your fingerprints, which is a huge plus. And you have a good amount of customization with the case color and the buttons. So right off the bat, there you go, you have a great start. And, you know, yes, this is geared for PC, PS3, Switch, but if you get those Wingman adapters, then you have no problem playing on PS5, PS4, Xbox, and so on. So you get to decide how much you're going to be spending. So why step up to the Zappa over the Bridget? Well, it's pretty obvious. I mean, the base GP2040 only supports PC, PS3. Yes, it does support PS4 with a little voodoo and maybe Switch. But the Zappa comes right out of the box, ready to play on PS5, and that alone might be what does it for you. Uh, with the FGC adapter, just kind of really hard to find, or you just have to wait so long to get it, uh, maybe you need something right away and the Zappa is your solution, right? So that is probably the biggest selling point here. You don't have to manage extra adapters. You don't have to update their firmware in addition to your cable and you know, this, that, and the other. It's just there all in one. You grab it, you grab your cable, you grab you know, whatever you're going to hold it in, and you're off to the races. So. There is that argument to be made that simplicity is its own virtue, right? So there's a prime reason why you would consider the Zappa over the Bridget. The last group of people that you know, might think about passing on these guys are, I would say, is my 2019 self. That's the one who wanted to build a box that had everything in it. You know, it has to play on old systems. It has to play on new systems. It has to have controls for changing the directional pad or you know left stick right stick it has to have lighting switches it has to have status you know you get the picture right everything has to have a switch or control or something to, to do it and it has to be do it yourself and i get that you know that was my past self i still enjoy building controllers and rebuilding them and adding those kind of features but you know, you have something you know, with the AFS 18-inch, for example, it's just big and bulky, and it's something I'd much rather keep at home than try and take out to anywhere. Uh, even though, you know, it means I don't get to show off my work, uh, you know, I can post it online, but not the same. Uh, having these guys just be my go-to travel option is just awesome, right? I can throw them in a laptop sleeve, throw them in my other stuff when I go traveling, and there you go. I can play Street Fraud on the road, I can play whatever on the road, and I'm set. All right, to close this out, I want to thank SGF again for sending these over for review, and yeah, I'm pretty sure at least one of these is going to go in my travel bag for quite a while. Uh, when I'm <clears throat> going out to, you know, Game Center, or, you know, if I'm just on the road and want to play some Street Fighter or what have you, yeah, I'm definitely going to be taking one of these with me just, you know, because it's so easy to take as opposed to my usual builds, which are ginormous and, you know, fun to play on, but not practical for travel. So, but these guys definitely are, they're definitely very high quality and 
you know, they just play so nicely. So definitely take a look at sgfdevices.com if you are interested in acquiring your own Zappa or your own Bridget. Hey y'all, it's time for the reverse cap tax. You know what it is. If you found this content informative or, you know, you just like the kitty and he's a little squirmy, so he wants your likes. He wants your comments. He wants your subscriptions. So please, you know, hit those appropriate buttons and look forward to more content from the Arcade Stick. The Arcade Stick. I like that it has this nice grippy texture. Thank you and cut.